What's going on everybody, C4, welcome back to the channel, and today we're here for a new Madden 22 realistic rebuild. We're getting down to the nitty gritty, only a handful of teams left, and this is one that I've had circled. This is a legitimate rebuild, no more, you know, year one, year two Super Bowl expectations like we've had with the Rams, and we've had with the Chargers, and we've had with the Bills. It is time to rebuild the Atlanta Falcons, a very... Big job, very tough task. This is a roster that is under complete reconstruction, and we are here with an updated roster. I don't know, it's the top updated roster on uh, the Xbox. So if you have any complaints, I'm just I just said screw it. I'm gonna rock and roll what this guy has. And here's a look at our team here for the Atlanta Falcons. You can see we're 76 overall, so we're one of the lowest base overall squads. I did not expect, you know. Mariota and Desmond Ritter have the same rating, but they do. And I, you know what? I'm, I don't disagree. I have my own biases. Oh my God, he looks like an elf. They have got to get better face scans in this game. And obviously, that's not his face scan, but I mean, come on, dude. Uh, we got Desmond Ritter under center, 70. I, I just feel like that's feeding to the Wolves. Even though I do think Marcus Mariota is, at least in Madden sense, and maybe even in NFL sense, like the one backup, probably along with Minshew, that like I would love to see get a second opportunity somewhere just to see what, what could happen. Uh, but in this case, for this rebuild, I'm just going to go with the youth quarterback here, Desmond Ritter. Get him out there. Get him as many opportunities to potentially go up dev trade. I would love to get him off that normal dev, uh, if possible, as soon as possible. But we got 89 throw power, uh, 84 accuracy is pretty good. 82 throw on the run. Obviously, a very good athlete. 88 speed, 90 acceleration. Absolutely crushed the combine. It's one of the most athletic combine performances for a quarterback. And that also kind of needs to be said with an asterisk because, you know, Lamar Jackson and Kyler Murray, all these guys that are super fast for some reason, they always just skip the combine. So Ritter, Ritter was like the most recent true dual threat quarterback that actually went through the drills. I think that is important to know. Um, we have at running back at the skill position spot. Actually, I like this. This gives you the big picture here. I don't know if I like showing the team off this way versus just doing it in the minutes. Either way, uh, we got Cordero Patterson, 86. I mean, what a signing this guy was. Uh, he is a superstar. He must have that superstar like off of the last roster update. And I have no problem with it. I thought he should have made the Pro Bowl last year. Like first ballot, not been a reserve or anything. He was exceptional. Shout out to anyone that managed to scoop him off the waiver wire in fantasy football. Patterson was a beast. Now for a rebuild, uh, you know, we got a couple old running backs there. It's, it's not going to be the best. But for the short term, it's more than suitable. They traded recently for Brian Edwards from the Raiders, which is awesome. Uh, now, the only thing that sucks about this is on my NFL all day, which is like <laughs> NFL NFTs. I have a legendary Brian Edwards freaking Raiders moment. I don't know if that's gone up in value or just worth cents, like everything. But uh, I'm excited to have him there. We got Drake London, the rookie that they picked. I mean, uh, you know, my personal opinions is kind of what we just have. 73 star dev, terrific jump ball wide receiver. Uh, has a whole lot of upside as well. He's only 20 years old. It's like a basketball team with Drake London, Edwards. You got Kyle Pitts freaking nature here at the tight end spot. I mean, I'm obviously I'm a massive Kyle Pitts fan. I'm excited to see what we can do with that in the rebuild. O-line is, I mean, Matthews is a veteran. Hennessy and Lindstrom should be solid for the majority of it. But, I mean, maybe there needs to be a piece here or there added on the offensive line. Flip it to the defense. Front three, we got Marlon Davidson, Grady Jarrett. Do need to find maybe a long-term nose tackle. Rest of the front seven, we got Arnold Ebiketti, which is one of my favorite picks of the draft. I think he's going to be a great player for the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, we have uh, Debo and Rashawn Evans in the middle. You also have Troy Anderson. I'm probably going to flip and maybe see if we can get D'Angelo Malone, the rookie out of Western Kentucky, on the field sooner than later. But we do have Lorenzo Carter in that spot. Uh, Harris and Richie Grant are safeties. A.J. Terrell, bonafide breakout superstar potential corner. Got the superstar dev, 88 very good. It was one of the best corners in the NFL last year. They have the veteran and Casey Hayward there. Kai's a scop gap as well with Isaiah Oliver. So, I mean, here or there, there's definitely some positions I do want to upgrade. But all in all, this is going to be a fairly, you know, meaty, beefy, a lot of content type rebuild. We got a lot of things we need to achieve here. A lot of spots we need to get better. So it's nice to kind of have like an all-out rebuild, which is what we're going to get into. But before we go any further, need to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor. Price Picks is the easy way to play daily fantasy and is it available in most U.S. states and Canadian provinces. You pick two to five players and an over-under of the projections with a ton of stats to choose from. You got points, you can take a look at assists, you can look at rebounds, you can do every little bit that your heart desires for the NBA playoffs. And later, once the football season starts, you hit them up on the rushing yards, you hit them up on the passing yards, the receiving yards, and it is that 
easy. So tonight, let's get a couple picks in. We have tonight's game, which is the Mavs and the Warriors. I'm going to actually look at points here. We're going to take a look at Klay Thompson. I want to get a little action on the Canadian Andrew Wiggins. I'm thinking maybe we show a little love tomorrow. We'll go Jimmy Buckets. We'll go Max Struss. He's been absolutely killing it. So we're going to go Klay Thompson over. Andrew Wiggins under. I'm going to go Jimmy Butler over. And Max Struss over. That is going to be my bet. 20 to win 100. We go flex play. Only going to get 3 or 4. But I'm going to go with the power play. All or nothing. I want that 200 bucks. That is how easy it is. If you sign up for prize picks with promo code C4, you will receive a 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks. Click the link in the description below. And a massive thanks to prize picks for sponsoring today's video. So we're about the midway point of year one. We have our first breakout scenario. I'm trying to guess. Oh, it's Lorenzo Carter. He's a normal dev outside pass rusher. Didn't really factor him into the plans, but you know what? If he can get a star dev, could go a little bit of a long way in terms of, you know, so that's actually sim a week here because he might be a player that's an impending free agent. And uh, I'd rather just see if he's going to be a star dev or not, whether we decide to resign. Because I'd hate to resign him, and then he didn't hit this. And then I'm stuck with, you know, a young guy. We actually got absolutely smoked by the Dolphins, 35-10. We're 4-2, which is surprising. Everyone in the NFC South, very competitive. Let's see if we get that breakout for Lorenzo Carter, and he's happy with it. Wow. Okay. I mean, yeah, remember, Lorenzo Carter coming out of Georgia, like, freaky. Had a massive combine. So let's take that, roll it into our contracts. We have a trillion dollars, so I can pretty much re-sign whomever I would like. Let's see what we got here. Um... Well, you know what? Lorenzo Carter. Let's see what the kid got. Let's give him a four-year, 23 mil. Get him signed. A little bit of a breakout here. Um, I think Rashawn... You know, it's one of those things we do have Troy Anderson. But, I mean, that's... that's Rashawn Evans, that's, there's a lot of upside there. That guy can go in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? The only tricky one here would be Isaiah Oliver, 75-24. Can he continue to develop? That's not really that bad of a contract. Gives us a little bit of wiggle room in case he doesn't, especially like that under a $3 million cap hit. I would say more so an insurance policy. We can't draft a corner if the corner market doesn't look that good uh, for the first couple of free agencies. Gives us a little bit of wiggle room. Plus, again, he could be a player getting a lot of snaps, could get off that normal dev. But there we go. We're Sean Evans, Isaiah Oliver, and new star dev Lorenzo Carter all get themselves new contracts. So we're here at the end of year one, and <laughs> the first thing that came to my head as I finished this was like, no one's going to believe this. Everyone's going to think either I played all the games or I moved their playbook to, like, the Bucks or the Chiefs. This happened! Look at the stats. I mean, defensively, we're pretty bad. Rushing was, was decent. But we were a top-five offense. And I don't know where he finished. He finished second. Uh, hand of God. Desmond Ritter in the Falcons. And this is not completely unheard of. I remember in year two or three of pink slips... Gardner Minshew finished top five, uh, and he was a quarterback of the Falcons. So I have seen, and those aren't ridiculous numbers, by the way, either, uh, but still, you know, shocking, shocking numbers for that Desmond like 70 normal quarterback, comes second in yards and top five in touchdowns. Interceptions, now, now look, there, there makes a little bit more sense there. Interceptions are ridiculous, but again, what? This is like a run-heavy playbook, you would think. Arthur Smith bringing what he brought from Tennessee, and this it gets, it gets put on notice. The Falcons playbook. It feels like the last couple of rebuilds we have very good performing quarterbacks. This was shocking. I would have believed you if you're like I see four. You know you definitely flipped it to the cheat. No, this happened. And I mean for that, I mean we're definitely going to be get a dev trade increase for Ritter. But the fact that he played like an MVP this season as a 73 is ridiculous to me. Now the interceptions are god awful. That's bad. 26 picks might be like some of the highest interception numbers I've seen. But that, that's that's a hell of a year. He also threw in, you know, two sets. Would it be nice to have him a little bit more rushing yards there? But our rushing offense is good, too. Ten touchdowns. Damian Williams, 13 and 14 for Cordero Patterson, averaging 80 yards a game. Uh, on the receiving standpoint, Brian Edwards. Like, what? where did this passing offense come from? Have I just been sleeping on the Falcons? 97 yards. Uh, sorry, 97 receptions, 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns for Edwards. We got 12 and 10 and 105 receptions. For Kyle Pitts, 83 for the rookie Drake London, 1,000 yards, four touchdowns. Bird, even eight. Like, these are numbers that you see 
when you use the Chiefs playbook, when you use the Tampa Bay Bucks playbook, not the Falcons, almost 4,000 yard receipt. Like, proof's in the pudding here. Look. Not even, I gotta double check to see what it is. We are rocking with the West Coast zone run, which were a 50% scheme fit as the Atlanta playbook. But I'll tell you right now, man, this it's going in the list. It's going in the numbers are shocking. Um, I've been looking at the defense. So was the defense good? We had 119 tackles, Deion Jones, 109 Rashawn Evans for the sacks front, 13 and 17 for Grady Jarrett. Those are good numbers. 14 TFL, six sacks for Lundra Carter, one up dev trade. Sack numbers are a little bit low. Definitely not the defensive side that we want. The offense kind of carried the load this year. I'd say all over two interceptions. Lead the team, got himself a new contract. But this, I mean, proof's in the pudding. I have seen, and we have seen in these rebuilds, one kind of Oatlier year, and then everything else kind of regresses down to the mean. I'm going to be very much keying in on the fact, can we do this consistently, or is next year we're going to have 1,000-yard receiver and everyone else has a down year? That'll be something to keep an eye on. I mean, back in older Madden games, I was always convinced that there was scripting when you had a rookie quarterback in as your starter. Uh, but we now know, you know, it's a lot more tied into playbooks, and maybe we just need to put some respect on the Atlanta Falcons because these are as, as organic of numbers as you can see, and it's absolutely insane production that I'm seeing from, you know, the fact that, like, if you saw these numbers from a rookie quarterback and you had, you know, a wide receiver core that, you know, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, you know, and, and then you throw in whomever there. You're like, all right, that might make a little bit more sense. Not Brian Edwards, Drake London, both these guys under 70s. Obviously, Pitts is the next factor. But I, I can't even, even the fourth like, fourth guy almost had 900 yards. Uh, unless, unless everyone knows Atlanta's been money, I am absolutely shocked. And I'm going to be furious if we if Ritter does not play like this every other because I need him to keep this trajectory going so we can get superstar and then a superstar X factor and we can win a Super Bowl in this rebuild. But I, I'm going to just say right now I'm predicting and I'm preparing for next year to be a down year. I don't know why. I don't know why I'd, I'd want that you know even speak that into existence. But I am still truly shocked at this year with the land. Probably more shocked than I've had for any other season. What? As we close out the year, surprise, surprise, Cowboys, Browns, Super Bowl. Where have I seen that before? But let's take a look at our lineup. Any dev track? I mean, we should have a couple. I think Brian Edwards should get one. I think Desmond Ritter should get one. Edwards did. He's up to a star. Desmond Ritter is up to a star. Unfortunately, I mean, you can only go up one dev trait. At any time you have a quarterback that's a scrambler, spend all your points into improviser because if you plan on them being a long-term starter, you want that improviser to get out to a 90 so that you can get the all escape art. So no other dev traits gained on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, I, I, I hope Cordell Patterson doesn't get with better. This is a perfect example of how regression is not very good in Madden. Cordell Patterson had a tremendous season. He should not go down any rating. His rating, I, I think that would be the compromise. Is that when you have that running back, you know, obviously in wide receivers and stuff like that. But when you have guys that are like 32, 33, if they have big seasons, can the middle ground just be their rating stays the same? I don't need them to get like outrageous buffs. I don't need them to go up, you know, five, six points if they have a huge year. But just can we just not have them get regressed nonsensically, minus three, minus four? How about if Cordell Powers, let's look at him right now. He's 87, had 1,400 yards, some touchdowns. He should not regress anything. You know he's going to regress minus two, minus three, minus four, somewhere in the range. How about in Madden 23, any player that breaks a certain threshold, have it in the algorithm. They just don't regress. Regression stunted. I don't need to be greedy. I don't need him to get plus two, plus three skill upgrades at the end of the offseason. Just don't nerf him. Moving on to the defense. Um, I'm not seeing any dev traits on the defense side of the ball, which is a little bit of a bummer. Would have loved to see like an Isaiah Oliver, Ebiketti, Richie Grant, someone go up. But everything this season was so heavily focused on the offensive side of the ball. I'll take it for Brian Edwards and Desmond Ritter. Now the question is, I don't know how this guy set his roster up. Am I getting Calvin Ridley back or what's going on there? And of course we go into free agency with $97 trillion. And there, this is a pitiful free agency class. Like Tom Brady's the only guy that I would even... Consider sign. Like, we don't need a running back. Poor Patterson. There you go. Patterson minus fucking five. Um, you know, and there's there's nothing else there. Like, it's all short-term guys at running back. You look at wide receiver. It's Odell. Guys in the 30s, late 20s. Not exactly looking at that. No upgrades to be had on the offensive line. Go to the defense. And again, like, you, I need a nose tackle. Ionitis is the only guy that's kind of a Again, he's 28. 
He's 81 is probably his ceiling. Uh, so there's just nothing. So it's a real, I mean, you know, it's not that bad when you think about the fact that we're going to be able to just keep that money. That money's going to be spent keeping our own talent in-house. But the fact that there's like straight up no freaking upgrades is, uh, I mean, you look at safety again here. You got Richie Green, who I like. Maybe we could look at Ronnie Harrison there. I like Richie Grant. Actually, you know what we could do? I, I'm actually going. To, we're gonna go out to Ronnie Harrison because I can kick. I, there's no. I have no problem at all kicking Richie Grant to free safety. So we'll give Ronnie Harrison a competitive offer. Four year, thirty one point eight million dollars puts us in the top bid, and then we'll take the rest of the money and keep it so we can resign our upcoming free agents. And nice, able to secure the signature of Ronnie Harrison. So as I said, with that we are going to shift Richie Grant into the free safety role, which hey, might be a little bit more natural to play in there. I uh, would love for him to get a depth trap. I'm a big fan. He was really, really sick at Central Florida. So I'd like to see him kind of stick on here with the roster. It's going to be tough to do the more seasons go past and he does not get a dev trade increase. But I have no problem right now, unless there's someone beastly in the draft of, uh, you know, let's give Richie Gain another opportunity to start. We also have a fifth-year option to pick up, and it's Lindstrom. He's an 85 guard. So absolutely going to be a part of our long-term plan. So we will pick up the fifth-year option for him. We do have a fifth-year option for Caleb McGarry. And on that side of things, eh, nah. Oh, man, that's an absolute kick of the dick. There goes my top player, Sharif Nance. He was the guy. I, there was a couple wide receivers, and Nance were my top targets. Let's see what's available left. I mean, looking, I was looking at wide receiver to get that third wide out. Uh, defensive line, just to generally either get a nose tackle or a pass rusher for the 3-4. Let's see, do we have wide receiver? Gaddis is still here. This guy looks legit, man. A catching, B release, six feet tall, got second 4-2 speed, and the 20-yard shuttle is very good. You'd love to see the three-cone be a little bit better, but look at the three-cone drill at the combine is top five. He's going to be a very good player. It's just, does he get the dev trait? Um, there's also, we have a DN Leno, but he's second round. He's a guy that I really want to get in the second round. We got the A power move in the combines at like, this is probably, I might even have to trade up, but we do have number 12 overall pick. I feel kind of decent because he, he also has a scheme fit too. 285, easily the biggest defensive end that's available right now. Uh, but you could also make the legit argument that, uh, you know, a nose tackle is very important we're lacking one right now cam bullard looks pretty impressive 65 310 a little bit slight for the thing but b across the board is a top fit for our team we have the first i mean that he looks very good uh as well uh it just kind of comes down to do we go d tackle do we go wide receiver i think actually we could probably make the argument that we go defense here even though i think that wide receiver is gonna be pretty good uh i think we probably should just because you know wide receiver is gonna still be behind brian edwards you're still gonna be behind drake london Versus Cam Bullard, who's going to be our day one starting D-tackle. So I think that's where we're going to go here. And then hopefully we can get that defensive end on the back end here. But we're going to go Cam Bullard. Give me the dev. He does have a dev trade. 95 strength. Let's go. All right. We are we have pick 3 and 12 in the second round. So we can do a little bit of damage here. Um, what do we got left? Dang. Uh, wide receivers are gone. Is our pass rusher still here? Leno is still there. We're not even going to think twice. He's the guy that we need. Deshaun Leno, normal uh, normal dev. I think, I think he's going to be a good player, though. All right, take a little peek here at Frank rushing. It's just one of those spots. Is he a pass rusher? Is he not? You know, you look at the player notes trying to do a, a little bit of a giveaway, and it says, like, he loves to use a spin move. Uh, power, speed to power, bull rush. So it's like, you know, combo looks very good. I, I think we kind of got to pull the trigger here. No, no. God damn it. Back to back normal devs. Next up, we got a center here. It looks pretty good. Bring some versatility with his size 6'5. So I feel like he can pretty much play anywhere. And he's the only guy that has anywhere near this amount of top of you know, athletic testing and his individual spots. And again, normal. Ah, man, we cannot buy dev trait. All right, we got a lot of normal devs, but at least we hit on our first round pick. Let's take a look at the draft recap here. Uh, in the, ooh, okay, we got a lot of good players. Uh, I took a double swing there at punter, just to try to make sure, hey, we got actually, I think it's a 70 punter, that's pretty dope. Um, well, we got some good players. 
Roach is 75 normal. You can play him pretty much anywhere. We have Frank Rushing, 73 normal. Again, why can we get one Dev Trader? These guys are very good little players. Usually, too, for like, especially Rushing and Roach, those are just like the two athletic players left of their position, kind of BPA at that spot. And like, usually, wouldn't doubt that the top athletes, they have the lower rating, but they have a Dev Trade. Like, like for these spots, I'd take like, give me, I'd give up like five overall points for a Dev Trade on both these players. Uh, Deshaun Leno, 76. Has the plus one there, 77. Hell of a player. No dev. Uh, and then we got, luckily, Cam Bullard, 77. Hidden dev. Absolute beast. Looks like he's got a lumpy in the scheme already. Got that plus four strength, 99 strength. Absolute hoss. I do want to take a look at the two players that I wanted. Um, in the first round. What did that wide receiver, man? I feel like that wide out was pretty. So Nance was a player I was looking at. He would have had to get kicked to DN, though. Maybe. Of course, he's hidden depth. So luckily, we would have hit either one. But where's that wide receiver? Gaddis, 78, 96 speed. He's normal. So I probably would have been pretty pissed off about that, even though that guy is an electrifying athlete. There also was a linebacker in the second round before I drafted rushing. It's Hitchens, I believe. Steven Hitchens, there's another guy I was looking at. He's 76 hidden depth. That would have been pretty dope. And he's a speed rusher. But either way, very happy with my draft class, even though the dev traits aren't necessarily there. At least we have one big S-tier player with a dev. And really, I mean, those guys there all could probably see in the field sooner than later. Very strong draft class. One of my better ones. So take a look at our team here for year two. Again, this the biggest thing is just can we play at the level that we played last year over multiple seasons? I, I'm firmly expecting like 25 touchdowns for Ritter inexplicably. But who knows? Maybe he's an absolute beast. Maybe the fact that we're pretty much a basketball team. Uh, just jump balls, throw it up there. Guys make plays between Pitts, London, and Edwards. That's where we need to be. Uh, so excited to see if he can take the next step there. On the offense, we took Roach, who was a center. 75 center, kicked him with the right tackle. We have McGarry, who didn't pick up his option. And he's a 77 tackle. So we have our new uh, franchise right tackle. So that is kind of dope. And on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Bullard will start at nose tackle. Leno is going to get the start. Even though he doesn't have the dev trait that Davidson has, he's a better football player at this point in time. And if you're that right out the gate, I'm just going to be optimistic that you can get that star dev and really just close the gap there. Uh, other than that, I mean, the team looks fairly strong. We have Ronnie Harrison Jr. at strong safety. He's our lone free agency signing. And I'm generally optimistic that this team should be pretty damn competitive, especially with how top five this offense was last year. Uh, I'm firmly expecting, you know, big time numbers here in year two. So early into year two, we get a breakout scenario for Arnold Ebeketti. Normal dead pass rusher would love to hit this against our divisional rival, Carolina Panthers. So we lost, but it does look like Arnold Lekeddy did get his dev trade, so very much a silver lining in the loss. Midway part of year two again, the stitches ball are five and two. And Desmond Ritter, hey, hey you know what? I guess, hey, I guess Desmond Ritter is at least not top three right now, so maybe he's not going absolutely crazy right now but our team is anyway so let's take a look at our contracts here we didn't spend a lot of money in free agency so we should be able to resign any and all players that we want uh it's definitely looking a little i definitely want to get brian edwards he is very much excelling in this team so we'll get him locked up honestly i feel like cordero pirates is so fun i i have no problem signing with that amount of money given how much south oh you want more it's a little disrespectful. Uh, same thing with Casey Hayward. I mean, we even get him on a one-year deal. He's in the slot. He's not going to regress too, too much. But I don't know, man. Cordero Patterson, we already know he's going to regress down to a 78. Might not be worth it, especially because he gave us pretty much the middle finger to this very fair contract offer, in my opinion. All right, nice. This week, we got hit with a double breakout against the 1-8 bucks. First up is Deshaun Leno, who was our second-round pick, normal dev. That would be absolutely phenomenal if we hit on him. And we also have a break. This is like one of those ones I want to play it, but I won't. Uh, it's for Lorenzo Carter. Already went up from normal to star last season. Has an opportunity this week to go up to a superstar. Let's see if we can get it down. Would love to see us put up like 40 points like they do occasionally. But also fully prepared for a loss. Yeah, there's, there's the loss. We have three breakouts. Oh. All right, this is for something for Drake London. Don't care, man. Sorry, buddy. We're more so looking at the guys that had impending ones. I want, give me at least one. First off, Lorenzo Carter did not go up, Dev. That's a little bit of a bummer, but uh, Leno would be a big one. That would be one I would love because it's essentially like, there we go. Rookie, star Dev, 
Let's go. I'll take that in the L. And it's easy. I thought really we didn't make the playoffs. We got the first round by the elusive third round, first round by, sorry, with a 12 and 5 record. 12 and 5. We've won four in a row to kind of close out the season. And uh, I mean, the rookie quarterbacks are on fire. It's not just us. Kenny Pickett absolutely crushing it for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But look at the league. Desiree right there again at number. It's, it's official. It's absolutely official. I mean, we have that spin the wheel thing. The Falcons playbook is simply absurd. So Someone's been holding out on me. This playbook is insane. Look at that's MVP. We have Desmond Ritter, a quarterback that's a normal dev last year. And in two years, really arguably both years, last year, I mean, the interceptions were pretty shit. They, I, unbelievable. I, I had, like, if you told me, see, for what's a sleeper freaking playbook, I would say, because I remember Gardner Minshew going off in, in, in pinks. But I, I might not have even said Atlanta, but it is full force. Like we have that option in pink slips where we can go play. But I might need to consider this Falcons playbook. This has been God mode. Not really a whole lot there in, in, in terms of rushing there for Patterson. It looks like this is going to be his final year. Ritter got some pretty good production on the ground there as a receiver. 13 and 16 for Kyle Pitts. 100. Like where are these? Like how, how are they getting this much production? Like, that's the thing that's just crazy. I, I don't think I, Atlanta was going to have this last year. Like, it doesn't have any inclination that this is Arthur Smith's offense. But, like, it's just the amount of volume these guys are getting. It's just half the playbooks don't get it, even if the team is more like that in real life than not. Uh, Edwards has been a phenomenal player since he's been here the two years of this rebuild. 13-13, and 9-4 and four there for Drake London. Uh, on the defensive side, 131 tackles there for Rashawn Evans. Still, the sacks, probably not where we want him to be. Nine sacks, Ebiketti. Nine sacks, Grady Jarrett, 22 TFLs. Uh, so maybe the defense is, is still lacking a little bit. I can, can probably attest to not using the Falcons defense. But the Falcons offense, man, this is incredible. We, we got to have MVP here. Desmond Ritter is the MVP. I was fully prepared for year two for Desmond Ritter to just somehow like regress down to the norm. Like 25 touchdowns. 15 picks, something like that. Oh, no, he just got better. Don't worry, he just got better. Defense player, they went to J.J. Watt. Uh, taking a look here. More so for Falcons. I don't even know who that is. But Deshaun Leno got defensive rookie. Their runner-up was Cam Bullard, our nose tackle. Best quarterback, Desmond Ritter. Best wide receiver, Brian Edwards. And then uh, ooh, we had a lineman to make it. There's Lindstrom there, number five. We have at linebacker, nobody. DB, fortunately, nobody. Second best kicker, Young Way Koo. Love seeing that. But Desmond Ritter, year two, is your NFL MVP for the first bye, first round bye, one seed in the NFC Atlanta Falcons. Huh. All right, let's get into our first playoff matchup here against the 9 and 8 Saints. Still very early on in this read, but only year two. So I, I think we can. We can just see if we can go on a little bit of a run here. We get the dub, 31-13, nice. That first playoff victory for this entire squad. That's going to be something we can build off of. Happy for Desmond Ritter and the guys. Ritter was clean. So was Jameis Winston, all things considered. Um, Kyle Pitts, absolutely eight on the defensive side of the ball. Not much. But it was more so about the quarterback, and it sets up a matchup there just like that. Because we had that first round by in the NFC Championship game. And my God, man, it's like it's like whatever success we're having as Atlanta, it feels like Pittsburgh's getting the same. They beat in a shootout the Chiefs. And we're led by Desmond Ritter. They're led by Kenny Pickett. It's the one and the four. The one and the four. I mean, Arizona off the top of my head. Like, this this should be, could be a winnable game. Yes, you got Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, all those guys. And it is close. A one-score championship game, but I'll be honest. I, you know, it still might end up being this way. But the fact that I thought this was going to be one of the toughest rebuilds, and in year two we are a win away, a touchdown away from potentially going to the Super Bowl. Uh, very optimistic. Exact same thing happened with Kenny Pickett and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Fell a little bit short to the slightly more established team. But I think, we'll, I think we'll be able to grow. We'll be able to learn from this. We'll be able to go into year three a little bit better. Yeah, not a great game from Desmond Ritter. One touchdown, two interceptions. But things are looking very promising for the Atlanta Falcons heading into year three. So as we clear our lockers, let's take a look at the squad here and just see what types of increases we have. We have the freaking league MVP 
in Desmond Ritter. So he is up to a superstar, and he has five points to spend. Brian Edwards is up to a superstar. What a trade that has been to acquire him from the Raiders. He has been amazing. Every bit of a superstar that we need. Grady Jarrett's up to a superstar. Um, did Leno go up to super? I, I can't remember. Literally... I last recorded this last night, so there's been a minute. He got defensive rookie of the year. No dev traits. Okay. Still works out fairly well. Uh, that is about it for... The oh, no. Ebiketti. Arnold Ebiketti did not have... He was normal dev, I believe, last season. Man, I'm tri I'm just tripping, though. Again, I just don't know my team. Because he didn't even go up dev up, up or and or down a dev trait. But Grady Jarrett up to a superstar. And much more importantly, Desmond Ritter and Brian Edwards up to a superstar. And for Desmond Ritter, in this case, we're going to spend all these points in Improviser, especially the way that he's playing. It's all about Escape Artist. So coming to this free agent period, I want to spend a little bit of money. you got to remember, as long as you're on the rookie contract for Desmond Ritter, this is our window to be aggressive to try to win a Super Bowl. Very surprised to see Lamar Jackson here. But we're going to try to put a big offer here on Scary Terry McLaurin. X-Factor wide receiver, 96 and I feel like he's an excellent compliment. We have Brian Edwards, Drake London, very similar style wide receivers. Both have been very productive, but we've also shown that we've had three productive wide receivers. I feel like someone like, you know, Scary Terry, I, I, he could unlock the offense here just even more. Take it to the S tier level right now. It's just an A tier. Also, it is finally an opportunity to potentially go with a Tony Pollard RB1 in a rebuild. Everyone knows for the last couple of Madden's, Tony P's been one of my dudes. Just haven't had the opportunity yet to really feature him and focus on him. And with the moving on of Cordero Patterson, someone like Tony Pollard absolutely could fill into that role. And then lastly, I'm looking at Montez Sweat here as more so an upgrade over uh, Lorenzo Cardi. Lorenzo Cardi hit a star dev with us, went from normal to star, a little bit of a project. Uh, Montez Sweat's a year younger and six overall points better, and he's a superstar. So we would flip him to a uh, right outside linebacker. And I think he'd be able to excel in that role. He's a freak athlete. And beautiful, all three of those players like what we're doing here in Atlanta. We have our new running back, we have a new pass rusher, and we have a new wide receiver one. We also have an opportunity this offseason to pick up the fifth-year option on A.J. Terrell, our superstar corner. We're absolutely going to be doing that. So we had to wait a minute here for our selection. I want to go DB here. I feel like getting either a third corner or maybe an upgrade over Richie Grant, who has not gone and taken that next step. Uh, is the top priority. You have a couple first round corners here. None of them are scheme fits. Greg McIntyre is the only guy that kind of fits the build. I'll tell you right now, the key ratings for these players, even though they're top fits for us, uh, make me a you know a slight bit hesitant. You're seeing D's that kind of puts you off certain players, especially at, 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 at things you want to see higher than. So it looks like it's maybe a little bit of a weak corner class, but there are a couple good safeties that definitely look uh, fairly appealing. We probably want to more so keep it to uh, to the free safeties, uh, we have Gaines and Eric Harris, both our first rounders for or uh, for Gaines here. Get the D man covered C zone. He is six two. He looks, you know, the combine was okay, but I'm kind of eyeing in here on Eric Harris. Got the A hit power, the A tackle, the C man covered six three, two hundred pounds, top ten in the forty, top five in the three cone, the twenty yard shot. It honestly doesn't seem like a particularly strong draft. But I think Harris might be the best of all of them, and he is a hidden dev free safety. That right there at the gate is exactly what we're looking for because that's the issue with uh, the last free, the safety that we currently have, uh, Richie Grant, because he just can't get off his normal dev trait. Oh, man, I actually thought literally just a shot in the dark. We got Enrique Waller. Uh, he was one of the two or three corners looked pretty good, but as you can tell by his, we just went with the fast guy. 94 speed, 92 acceleration, and he cops with the hidden dev. I will always say, 5'9", plus he looks like a slot corner. But I will say, it, it went in doubt. If you're picking blind, always, 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 if there's a tiebreaker, go with the better athlete. They tend to have the dev traits. All right, draft recap tie. I think it was, I think it was a decent draft. At least we know in the first two rounds, the corner and the safety were the top two guys I kind of was looking at. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, I simmed that, but did not see Racy Sprinkle coming in. Shout out to the computer. After I, after I made the wide receiver selection, I was like, you know what? I think we're good. And the computer hooked me up with a set. Let's see what we got for devs. So we knew there was a hidden dev on Eric Harris, which was great. He's going to be a starting safety. I, I think we're probably going to have to, like, you know, just bump him up to that starting gig. Uh, we have in the second round, Enrique Waller also pulling in a dev trade. Not as high of a rating. Uh, but again, speed kills. Uh, the coverage ability actually kind of sucks. Uh, so right now he's much more of an athlete than he is a starting corner, but that's fine. We got Herman, Cole Herman, wide receiver, normal dev. 
A uh, nice slot, typical slot wide receiver looking there. But then Racy Springer, this is all computer normal dev. So it is a little bit, uh, you know, I'm going to say underwhelming because look at that, man. Those stats, that is a great little batch of core attributes. He's going to come in and most likely be RB2, RB3. It is the Tony Pollard show. Rest of the picks, just kind of depth at that point. But God damn, man, that's back-to-back -back drafts. We are just pulling in the 70s. Dev traits could be better, but also could be very much worse. So year three, here's how the squad's lining up, and I will say, even though our the roster looks incredibly impressive, I'm now I'm ready for the for the shoe to fall here and for Ritter to have 20 touchdowns or something stupid like that. But I've doubted him every year, and he's proved me wrong. But a lot of changes here. We now have Ritter as a superstar. Edwards is now a superstar. We brought in Tony Pollard in the backfield. Big time investment. Scary Terry in the wide receiver core to pair that with Drake London. Not much movement on the offensive line. They're just growing and getting better. Uh, which has kind of been, you know, a goal of ours. Grady Jarrett's now up to a superstar. We have uh, Montez Sweat coming out the edge there as a pass rusher. Our first round draft pick, Harris, absolute baller, probably a top 10 pick in that draft class. He's going to start right away. So our team definitely only got better. We had the first round bye. We were the number one seed last season. How can this go wrong? Uh, all right, I wasn't recording at the beginning of this, but we're still good. It's time for contract renegotiation time. And we had a lot of money. We're throwing it around. We got Lindstrom re-signed. We got Deion Jones re-signed. We have Desmond Ritter, $146 million. He is re-signed. We also got Jake Matthews and Matt Hennessy on the offensive line back on the books. Still have a little bit of wiggle room here. I think we'll, we'll throw Grady Jarrett some money. I don't think his regression will be too, too bad. But I am. I think we might have to make a couple tough decisions. I love Arnold Abichetti. But, I mean, what kind of production? For $56 million, what kind of production have you been offering us? And it's been, you know, average, above, slightly above average. That's not really $50 million bucks. As much as I think that was an outstanding draft pick for the Falcons. It just hasn't really worked out for him this year. Last year, you know, he had that nine-sack season, I suppose. But I think for the time being, you know, we're going to wait and see. Maybe the open market's a little bit better. So we lost the last three in a row. To end the season, we still made the playoffs, still won the NFC South, so it wasn't that bad of a year, but very annoying because if we would have won those last three games, maybe we would have had another first round bye, but I will take it. Got to run the gauntlet here, but still another very nice season, all things considered. Look at the big picture. I don't think we have any top statistical guys. I wonder how Ritter played. Is he still a top 10 quarterback? He might still get X-Factor. Sixth in yards, fourth in touchdowns, 4,600 passing yards, 38 touchdowns, 10 picks. Hell of a year. Uh, running the ball, 1,010 for Tony P. I'll take that for a role player in his first kind of big starting opportunity. 13 and 12 for Scary Terry. 1,005 for London. 9 and 11 for Kyle Pitts. 7 and 5. So Edwards, unfortunately, did take a step back with Scary Terry in there. But it's one of those things like if it goes to your five, we got to hop on the sticks. Who is stopping this wide receiver core as long as we can kind of keep all the keep the band together for a minute here? Look at the sacks. Of course, Ebiketti has a breakout year. Of course, when we decide not to pay him, uh, 10 sacks there for Deshaun Leno. Interceptions, four picks. A.J. Terrell leading the team. A very quick look here at the yearly awards. MVP went to Ezekiel Elliott. Desmond Ritter coming in at number three. Look, Kenny Pickett right there as well. He's been pretty good uh, in the end. Let's just see. For overall award winners, we're just going to ignore the fact that Daniel Jones is absolutely crushing it for the Buccaneers. Evan is the top line. We might have to pay him now. Because, you know, if he goes up to superstar dev, I can't let that hit leave the building. Especially because he's a guy, homegrown guy, actually drafted by the team. But here we are, first round of the year three playoffs. Take on the 6-10. and 10 pay. How did they make the playoffs? 6-10? and 10? 6 and 11, whatever you want to call it. That is, there's no way. Oh, that was week 18. Oh, my God. I, I promise you I'm not on one right now. I promise you. I'm going to leave that in. Because that's a, that's a kind of a funny botch there. But what? Okay, well, we got the dub. <laughs> I was tripping. All right, let's try it again. Chicago, 9-8. and eight. First round of the playoffs. Justin Fields and the Bears. Our team's infinitely better. Almost 10 overall points better. And we get the... I can't believe I just did that. We get the victory, baby. 28-23 to 23 in this matchup. Ritter, three touchdowns, 350 passing yards. Justin Fields just couldn't keep up big game for drake london and scary terry both over 100 yards couple sacks there on the defensive side of things three sacks for grady jared what a monster 
and the Atlanta Falcons have played themselves into the second round to take on the two-seed Green Bay Packers. You know what, I kind of got to give credit to the Packers in a Madden sense. Like, they lose Devontae Adams, these are updated rosters, and they're still, like, always super competitive. So shout out to Aaron Rodgers. Shows you the value of having a great quarterback. So this is to get back to the NFC Championship game, and we're able, that's a dominant performance there. 28-9, to the Niners defeated the Cowboys, setting up that check, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are back. Man, Kenny Pickett's absolutely crushing it down there, but a performance here led by clearly the defense, only giving up nine points, not a great game at all from Desert Raider. One touchdown, two picks, but Tony P took the game over, buck 35, two touchdowns, and on the defense side of the ball, I mean, regardless of the performance that we held in the nine points, three, six sacks in two games for Grady Jarrett, he is simply a man possessed. And now we take on Trey Lance and the 49ers, the three seed, going against the four seed. Super Bowl on the line here in year three of this rebuild. Come on, baby. Punch our ticket to the Super Bowl. And it's just impossible, it seems like. One field goal is the difference. Last time was a one-score game. This year also technically a one-score game. Fuck. Can't get over that hump, man. They got Quez Walk. I mean, I, I'm never going to be mad seeing Quez having a game like that, I'll be honest with you. Just, uh, I mean, too many, you can't have that kind of game. You can't have the, the interceptions there. <sighs> All right, back to the drawing board. Year four. Then a quick look at our squad here to see if there's any dev traits. Ritter did not go up to X Factor. Okay, and on the defense side, did Ebikedi go up to Superstar? He did. We're going to have to find a way to re-sign him. And A.J. Terrell went up to X-Factor. That is nice. Harris, our rookie, hidden dev. He came out as a star. Didn't we have another? Uh, Waller was a hidden dev. He's a star as well. And we're able to lock down Arnold Etiquette to a $78 million deal. All I'm saying is we might we might have to... Uh, $75 million deal, so we might have to uh, win the Super Bowl next year because our salary cap's now looking very awful. All right, so for our final free agency period that we're going to be able to probably spend money, uh, we're we're going to go for it, man. Legereus Sneed at corner. We we moved on from the veteran Casey Hayward, and he is a scheme fit at 27, very good player, 88, an excellent you know an excellent compliment to AJ Terrell. Um, yeah, let's land him, and hopefully that's the difference maker for us. Wow, he flipped us the bird. Man, we still need a corner. I mean, we might be able to draft one given how well we've been drafting. Uh, what's left here? Marcus Peters. We got Slay. A couple veterans. Uh, let's, let's look towards the draft. The one piece of business we will do is picking up the fifth year option on the greatest tight end in Madden history, Kyle Pitts. All right, we got kind of burned here a little bit. Corners suck that are available. Surprise, surprise. Bring it at 30. All the good players are gone. Uh, oh, man. I have no idea. I literally went all in on corners. Um, this is bad. It's not what we want. I mean, at this point here, I'll, I'll go with the, the ski fit pass rusher, CJ Carter. You know, get uh, get someone maybe a little bit younger, potentially successor. Grady Jarrett, if there's bad regression, but my God, man, just no corners. We luckily, hey, we got a hidden dev. I'll take that for just a little consolation pick. We're in the second round. This is really the only corner. I have no scout, like 50% scouting on all these corners, for God's sakes. Uh, but this is the only guy that, like, even, he, he ticks off two of the three boxes that you want to see for a corner. He has the elite three cone, the elite 20-yard shadow, the 40-4-5 ain't bad. But it, it's slim pick is at the corner market. He's normal dev. He's probably going to be high 60s, low 70s, somewhere in that range. All right, draft recap time. Uh, Hail Mary pick of randomness, CJ Carter. I'll take that. 72 hidden dev. Could have been a normal. Uh, O'Neal, 71. I mean, that's not a bad rating for a second round pick, but hoping that we'd get a guy that was like 75 hidden dev, you know. Wasn't really getting that in this draft, unfortunately. A couple solid death picks here to kind of close out the draft, but uh, not the best offseason to try to, like, go all in on a Super Bowl here in year four, to be honest with you. No free agency signings. Got flipped the bird by Legereus Sneed in the draft. Didn't really fall our way. But we still got Desmond Ritter. He's going to be on a war path to try to get that X factor and to try and finally take this team past 
the NFC Championship game hump and win a freaking Super Bowl. All right, uh, this year has been god awful. 30th worst defense, we're below 500, and our team is absolutely stacked. Uh, take a look at the contracts here. I mean, I don't know off the top of my head there's going to be anything too crazy. It's down to two starters, but Terrell, that is going to be a, you know, we should be able to get that contract in, which we do. We got Drake London, another player that, you know, production-wise, he's been solid, man. He's like copy and paste 1,000 yards every single year. Uh, Mayfield would be cool to kind of just keep on the O line. Again, we're just we're able to get these three targets here. We're gonna have not much money to work in the off season, and it looks like with you know being below 500 here, it's gonna have to go to the year five Super Bowl or bust. But who knows? Maybe we'll be able to turn it around. What an end of if we win this game, we oh we lost it. We won like six games in a row, seven games. Like this team turned on the NOS, you know. It's like that scene from uh, the very first Fast and Furious when it's Paul Walker and Vin Diesel that first race. He's like, you almost had me. And then Vin Diesel says, you never had me, you never had your car. That's what the league thought with Atlanta. Like, oh, it's a down year. And then we, they did, it was too soon, Junior, able to come up, get another NFC South title, and get to take on the Saints in the first round. Uh, maybe this is what we need. We need a little bit of adversity. Things have been too easy for this squad. Look at that Scary Terry, the second best receiver in the NFL. Um... Uh, not really seeing a lot of other stats for our team, but the end of year four, Desmond Ritter still very good. Again, I don't know if that was good enough to go to X Factor, but 4,900 passing yards, 35 touchdowns, and it just confirms to me Falcons' OP offensive playbook in Madden 22 for sure. A uh, solid year there from Tony P. Th 1,607 for Scary Terry, 1,008 for Pitts, 8,9 for Brian Edwards, 7 and 6 for Drake London. And on the defensive side of the ball, a lot of tackles for Sean Evans, five sacks as well. 12 sacks, Grady Jarrett, nine for Ebiketti, nine for Montez, nine for Leno. All, all decent numbers. Four picks there, Ronnie Harrison, three for Grant, and A.J. Terrell. Taking a look here at the yearly awards. MVP went to Ezekiel Elliott because, of course, it did. Looking at the NFC, uh, we got any Atlanta Falcons here. That'd be cool if we did. Fortunately, no Falcons. That's fine. We made the playoffs here in year four. Two straight championship game appearances. How can this be disappointing for us? Take your pick right now in the comment section below, and we're about to find out. All right, let's go, man. First round. Wild card. Gotta run the gun. Again, maybe that's what we need, man. We've been spoon-fed. We had first-round buys and all that stuff. We gotta, we gotta go through the grind to, to earn this Super Bowl, and we're able to get that dub in the first round to prove that we're truly the best team in the division 27-21. Went to overtime. Gardner Minshew crushing it for the Saints, but Riddler, Ritter just did enough there. Two touchdowns, two picks. 100 yards plus for Drake London. Two picks there, right there. That's that's who's getting the game ball. Defense forcing those two picks. Sending this one to overtime, and we get to avenge our playoff loss last season. It is Desmond Ritter. It is Trey Lance. Let's go. I mean, at least we're the home team. I wonder if there's something to that. Like, if you're the home team, it gives you some form of edge in the same. You get the home field advantage, momentum, and then we get to the dub. It is a third straight conference. Third straight? Good, but am I tripping again, man? I'm a little bit all over the place here in this rebuild. But 38-27, uh, we put up points, put up some pretty big numbers. Was it Tony P? Hmm. Weird game. Very oddly weird game. We put up a lot of points, but Desmond Ritter didn't, you know, light them up by any means. Two sacks for Sweat and Leno. Pick from Eric Harris. Not the one that's what's used to be on the Falcons, the one we drafted. And we're in the NFC Championship game against Green Bay, the one seed. On the other side, it is the Dolphins. I wonder if they still have Tua. And then Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. This is a big-time game. God, I don't know, man. We're going to lose, aren't we? Like, I had to go see, you know, what's going on. They got Malik Willis. How does that happen as their quarterback? Aaron Jones absolutely crushed it. They got Malik Willis, Garrett Wilson, Christian Watson's crushing it. Defensively, you know, not the best defensively, but that's an explosive ass offense there. Malik Willis against Desmond Ritter, Super Bowl on the line. We fell in here twice in this rebuild, and we get it in an absolute shootout, 37-31, and it's, it's almost the exact same score this side. It is setting up 
A Bills Falcons Super Bowl. That's cool. We get to take on Josh Allen. Clean game from Ritter. No turnovers. Pitts was dominant. 88 yards, two receiving touchdowns. Got Grady Jarrett with a sack. Rashawn Evans with an interception. And it sets up. We're gonna we're gonna go in, man. We're gonna kick our feet up. We're gonna watch that Super Bowl kind of play out there. There we go. Year four. I mean, we can go year five. The salary cap wasn't as bad. Like, I thought we wouldn't be able to re-sign any of our big guys this year. So we can definitely run it a year five if this does not hit. But I am I'm pretty up. I mean, look at the team, man. 93 against an 88. Yeah, they got Josh Allen, but we are the better team. We should be able to win this game. And I will say, I guess out of all the teams, it's not like we're playing the Chiefs or something. If we lose to the Bills in the Super Bowl, it's like, you know what? They deserve it, you know? I don't think they've won the Super Bowl yet since we've been in here. We win the ball fairly well, man. It looks like we're going on a lot of long drives into Bills territory. Two touchdowns. We missed the extra point. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us in the ass. Oh, we get the oh, this is looking this is looking very favorable for Atlanta to win a Super Bowl here in year four. Oh, okay. I mean they got Josh Allen though. They could score quick, unless we can start taking some long drives. I'm fairly confident right now. Let's come in on third down. I have no idea what the difficulty's on. I'm gonna be honest with you. The difficulty could be could be all rookie, could be all pro. I'll take a shot here though. Oh, Tony P. Oh, yeah. This is not a high difficulty. This is not a high difficulty at all. Whatever. The game is already out of reach. Got to at least get on the sticks there with Tony Pollard for a touchdown. Oh, they turned the ball over. We just keep... That was a respectful field goal there. We let them score a little bit late. But it took us four years. And it took us figuring out that Atlanta had one of the most overpowered playbooks in Madden 22. But the Super Bowl has been a cheap... Man, that's... That's why also there's been a little bit of uptick here in the rebuilds. We've been getting, I don't know if it's getting lucky, but we have had some fairly freaking successful rebuilds here. Um, that's, that's always, you know, nothing's worse than, than, than making an hour long freaking video. And it's just no matter what you do, you fail at every single turn, every single turn, every single corner. It's just like, how can we get absolutely screwed? And it's been a good string of rebuilds, man. Gonna be honest, man. Atlanta, successful. Desmond Ritter, way better than you could have expected. And, uh, I mean, just this offense, man. Drake London, shout out Brian Edwards. Shout out Kyle Pitts. We didn't even really need Scary Terry to, to take this team over the top. It's the guys that were already here in the building. We got some other guys, all the icing on the top that helped push us over. But look at that, man. MVP, Desmond Ritter, 342 yards, four touchdowns on the game. And that is another successful rebuild. So thank you guys very much for tuning into today's video. I had a blast. I hope you did too. And we found out that Atlanta is just, hey, that's another good OP playbook. Maybe we need to carry that over into pink slips. But that'll do it for me here today, guys. If it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what rebuild you want to see next. And I'll see you guys back here on the next one. Thanks for watching and peace out.